class is instructor Muriel Howard. The purpose of this video is to explain and teach you how to get organized in order to learn medical coding. You may say, why must I get organized to learn coding, Instructor Howard? Well, here are a few reasons. One, to help you process the various amounts of information you receive each week. As you know, learning coding is a very difficult subject or a difficult task, but it's really easy to do once you become organized and have a list of information available at your fingertips. The only thing is, you cannot just place that information anywhere. The information has to be consistent with what, with what you're doing this current week. It also prevents you from falling behind, and I'll show you how that works in just a few moments. It is to assure you're able to quickly get back to the information you have saved and downloaded. For example, if you have completed an assignment and you've saved it on your computer for this course, and just say, for example, you go back to look for that assignment and you cannot remember exactly where you saved it, it's time to submit. You're running out of time, so you hurry up to submit your assignment. The next thing you know, you receive a zero from an instructor or myself explaining to you that this is the wrong assignment for this class. So, being organized and following the steps that I will show you today will help you to prevent from doing that. And being organized or getting organized to learn coding is for ease of use. Ease of use of the information, switching back and forth between information, and then finally, just because. Coders are very organized. We have keen attention to detail, and we also um, have a great memory. And one of the reasons why we have to have a great memory is so that we can process information and understand what we're doing every time we're coding a specific chart type. You're going to learn that as we continue on through this course. So here's the question. How do I get organized? Well, if you aren't organized already, then we'll show you how to do that today. If you are organized, and I believe most of you are, but you probably have been in this program for a long time, then I will show you some tips and tricks to help you solidify that organization for ease of use. Number one, we will make a folder in our documents for the current course we are taking. Number two, we will make several subfolders for each week make even more subfolders for the different types of information. And then we begin placing items inside of their respective folders to begin our weekly learning or studying process. And I will show you how to do that. All right, let's get organized. Okay, we will begin by going to our documents library or my documents. And then we will click the button to create a new folder. Let me show you what that looks like. And so I want to rename this folder whatever name of the course that I am currently taking. So I am going to name this CC3020. Now remember, you can use this method of organization for any course that you're currently taking. I'm just focused on BC3020 right now but you will do the same exact organizational process every time you get access to a new course. So once I've created that folder, I will double click on the actual folder to open it up. As you can see, the inside of this information is blank. We can see that we are inside a documents library. We are inside of our new folder that we just created known as BC3020. From here, I'm going to make another new folder. I'm going to name this folder Week 1. And I advise making several folders for each week. Make a new folder. Remember, you have five weeks of instruction. Okay, now that we've made all five folders for one for each week, we will double click on the first one. 
week one. We will do or follow the same process. We're going to make a new folder. For here, we're going to begin by making a folder for our discussion. We'll create another folder for our test. We we'll create another folder for assignments. And then we will create our last folder, last but not least, for resources. And you know, resources are items that you will use or, or gain from your research for whatever topics. Additionally, you will find more resources inside of your student materials folder, your student toolkit when you log into Blackboard, and also your weekly materials folder. And I will show you what each one of those folders have houses today. Okay, so now that we have created our folders, we will begin going through our class to find the necessary information to load inside of these particular folders. Okay, now I've logged into Blackboard. And the first place, as you can see where I am, is the familiar area. If it's not familiar, then you will locate this information by clicking on weekly materials on the left. Once you click on weekly materials, you will see a set of folders for the week. Basically, you're organizing the folders on your computer in the same fashion that Blackboard has been organized in your classroom. Now, whatever week you're in, for example, if you're only in week one, then you will only see the information inside of the week one folder. And that's fine if you're just starting a course. So I will click on my week one folder and I have my roadmap. I can print this or save it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to print it. And the printing software that I have is actually um, allows me to save this as a PDF file. So I don't have to put it in a printer. I'm going to save it inside of my week one folder. So I'm in my document back to 3020, go back to week one, and I don't need to place it in resources, assignments, tests, or discussions. I can just place it anywhere. Okay. Save. I want my roadmap readily visible to me, and it doesn't have to be in a folder. I need to continually refer back and forth to this roadmap whenever I'm working on my materials. So the first few weeks of some courses inside of your reading materials, you are able to download the chapters that you're working on. So for this course, and this is a coding class, we're using the Next Step textbook. You could be using any textbook, but usually within the first few weeks, you're going to have access to download the full chapter. So once I click on the chapter to download it, I have an option, once it's finished loading, I have an option to download. Let's see this. There's an option to rotate. This means download, this means print. So I'm downloading in the same area, document. And this is actually a different class, but you know, I'm just giving you examples. Go back to week one resources save it there okay then I close out I go back into the classroom I look at all of these resources that I have saved here inside of reading materials what do I want to do I want to highlight everything I'm going to right click I'm going to copy this information and then what I'll do is I'll open a blank Microsoft Word document Give it a minute. My computer is a little slow. And I'm going to paste this information to this Word document. The links are still here. It tells me to hit CTRL or Control and then click the link to go to the MD website. Um, I can print a full tracking sheet to stay organized. 
I can visit the career club here. The writing center, if I have an assignment that I need to submit or if I need to speak with the coaching department, I have their number right here. And then if I want to highlight important portions of this particular document, I can do that because I saved it to my computer. I'm going to hit File. I'm going to hit Save As. resources. Then I can rename this. I can actually rename this reading materials. Save that. Now that I've saved it, I can close this. I can close this. I will do the same thing for each of these folders. Presentation materials. What's in here for week one? Okay, so here's a video. I don't necessarily have to download this, but I can see if there's anything in here that I need to copy and paste or highlight. So back to week one. Highlight summary. And these give me the highlights of the chapters or the information that I've covered this week. So I know that if I want to go into next step for my highlights summary. If I need to copy and paste this information to a work document so that I can review it later, I can do that. Highlight everything right quick. Go to my word document. Open this document. A blank new document. Right click. And then paste in source formatting. When you paste information in a Word document, be sure to put um, keep source formatting so that you can see all of the pictures and all of the links that is saved on your Blackboard um, website. Okay, the same thing here. File, save as. One. This is going to be inside of my resources. So these, I'm just gathering resources right now. Okay, so I am done going through my highlights and summary. I'll go back to week one. And where it says educational activities and practice exercises, I can check this out for different things as far as the my skill skeletal system. Let's see what's in here. And as you can see that. Okay, so here we go. This is our musculoskeletal. I'll watch that later. Same thing for advanced musculoskeletal coding. Okay. Here we go. And I will come back to that later. Now, these are links that link you link you to videos. If you would like to keep these particular links close at hand, you can actually do the same thing. Highlight this, right click, copy, and paste it to a Word document. And the links will be available on the Word document, so you will be able to go from your computer, click this link, and it will take you to YouTube to view those videos. And you don't have to continually log in and out of Blackboard. You can do a lot of your work on your um, computer or your tablet while you're on the go. I'm going to go into the next step, educational activities. And it's basically telling me that here are my answers to the advanced medical coding textbook. So this particular class is working on chapter eight. Before I even begin coding, I'll just download my answers just so that I know that when I'm beginning to code and review the cases, I am or am not on the right track. So this will help me when I'm working and studying, and I'm gonna name it Answers. So as you can see, it's already placing this inside of my resources folder. Once you download something, 
from Blackboard or from online more than once, it will automatically know where to save your information for the future. You also have to be careful when you're working on week two that it's still not downloading your information into week one. So now I have actually went through my weekly materials folder. I've done my, um, I haven't done my introduction, but I've done my roadmap, gotten my reader materials, I see what's inside of presentation, I got my highlights, I see practice exercises that I need to do later on in the week or on tomorrow, if this is your first day. I've been through educational activities. The next place I want to go is student materials. So weekly materials is loaded by UMA. This is loaded by the curriculum team and the IT department. Student materials are loaded by the instructor. So inside of student materials, and especially if you're in my course, you're going to have anywhere from three to five items every week that will help you make it through the week. These items are called scaffolds. And what I try to do, and basically you want to start at the bottom, um, start with, you know, week one, you're usually going to see a welcome address video. This video is supplementary to the video that you're watching, watching right now. This welcome video actually explains a little bit more about me, grading and point calculations, how to access your multiple tests, printing your test prior to taking that, and my alternate contact information. So as you can see, you don't want to miss this. So this is a video about how to be successful in the overall class. So you want to watch that, but you don't need to watch it right now. What you need to do is get organized. Then I have Tools for Success Week 1. This is a link of the lecture that I created. And this is the PowerPoint to accompany that, and this is the study guide. There may be different things depending on the class that you're taking with me that I will put inside of um, these particular tables. But I try to set everything up as a table so that you can do this. You can highlight this, same thing. Open a Word document. And paste it. Remember, keep source formatting. And there you are. So this is some resources for week one. Save this. All right, let's save this teaching. I did it every time for that. August 2010. Week one. Resources. And then I'm going to name this. What she said. Two for success. Okay. So I've gathered my tools for success. Close that out. Now we have our suggested study plan, blank to-do list, and partially completed to-do list. You always want to um, access the study plan that I have online, or you want to create um, your own study plan. And there are some links online that will allow you to download a study plan. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put this inside of week one. I'm not going to put it in resources. This is going to be something that I need to access on the regular. So it's just inside of the week one folder. Then I'm going to close this. student materials, scroll down, or you can actually click the link right here, resources. and then here is the blank to-do list, this is a partially completed to-do list, once again it may be different depending on the course that you're taking with me, but if this opens online as a PDF, you just have to click the print or download button. And I'm just going to save this inside of week one. Not resources, not assignments, not tests, and not discussions. So I need to access this on a daily basis. And I'm going to go back. 
if you want the partially completed one, it has the links to various other places that we need to go for this particular course. And this is GC3030. I don't know why I made my folder 3020. I was actually working on two classes at once. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it depends on what class you're taking. Okay, so I save that. Checklist. Okay, so I'm gathering the necessary information. I see that there are some videos here for me to watch. I don't want to save that on my computer because I know that I can go here and go to YouTube. So here's another helpful resource. This says um, an ICD-10 website to help you convert code to I-9 if you're still using that over to I-10. This is also um, your mapping for AAPC. So both of these links here will help you convert ICD-9 codes to ICD-10 or search for ICD-10 codes by your main term. So it helps you to verify your coding if you're not sure about something in the book. As you can see, these videos here are actually links up here. Breaking down coding basics musculoskeletal coding guidelines and another breaking down coding basics. So I want to highlight all of this information, right click copy, and now I'm going to do the same thing, open a Word document as usual, a blank one, and I'm going to paste, keeping my source formatting, and as you can see the links are available so I can access these links. Here are some notes and instructions on how to use this information. And I am going to save as. And on this PC, once again, I'll try to my folder. We're dealing with week one. And this I'm going to consider a resource. So I'm going to say videos and links. Save it. Now I can close it. So I have pretty much gathered everything I need as far as my resources for week one. My folder is organized. I'm organized. I know what's where. I know where to go to go back to certain things and information. And last but not least, this is kind of one of the more important things I want to do. So I want to click on my assignments folder. assignment, download the worksheet where it tells me to download it on my computer. I should have actually asked me where I wanted to save this information and download it from here. So it's just automatically downloading it in my download folder. So I'm going to open it up. So this is just downloading it, but I can see on the bottom of my screen everything that I've downloaded. Enable editing a little button at the top that I need to do before I do anything else. I have the file, save as, this PC, not downloads. I'm going to go back to my documents, go to the folder, group one, assignment. I'm going to save my assignment there for later. So this I'll do the same thing for my test, not necessarily my test, but my study guide. You should have a few different versions of study guides. If, the, if you've gotten them out of um, student materials, you may have a different version than the one that's saved here. So once I click on my study guide, it does the same thing. It says downloads. So I'll click to open it, and then I will resave it. Enable editing, file, save as, this PC, and not my downloads because I'm going back to my documents. Back to my documents, back to the folder I created, week one. And I'm going to save this inside of resources because this is a study guide. Okay, so you can see the folders are basically filling up and we'll review those in a minute. Okay, so now discussions. Go down to my week 
one discussion, read the discussion instructions. It's pretty much telling me I can print this, so I will do that so that I can have everything. And remember, on my computer, I can save it as a PDF. If you don't have access to save this as a PDF, then you remember you can copy and paste to a Word document and then save it that way. So this is my week one discussion. I will place this inside of my discussion folder. And then I am pretty much all set for week one. So let's check out the announcements, see what the instructor is talking about, if there's anything more that she has added on the announcements page, which is usually me, and that's usually what I'll do in the first week. I'll announce some important things to you. Hey, hey, go back. What is this? Aha. Uh -huh. Additional resources for success with this course. It's telling me that I can go here and register to the evolve.com website for my textbook. And here are the instructions. So I can do the same thing. I can highlight this, right click, copy, paste it, save it as a resource. Here's the exact same thing that's inside of student materials, if I haven't gone there yet. And then these are some information about extra credit. Okay, so I am pretty much all set. We're going to take a look at our folders and find out if we have everything that we need. Okay, so as you can see, I have my to-do list, my completed one, suggested study plan, this is, I believe, my roadmap. And then inside of my discussion folder, I have my first discussion. So once I complete the discussion, <clears throat> following the instructions here, I can save my actual completed discussion in here as a Word document and paste it into the forum, keeping a copy for myself. I can do the same with the responses. Look at my resources. These are my study guides, my video links, my other tools for success, chapter answers, highlights, reading materials, and the entire chapter 8 in electronic format. Assignments. Here's my first assignment worksheet. Once I come work on this assignment, fill in my answers, or few of my answers, just say I want to do the first three to five answers, which is recommended. Do the first three to five answers when you begin, and then save it and come back to it. This particular assignment is only asking for seven answers. So if you want to do three now and three later, or if you want to do them all because you're so organized, then you can do that. Remember, some of your assignments have two portions. So don't forget to review the bottom. Portion number two on this assignment is actually worth 21 points. And it may be different depending on your course, so don't get fearful. Just make sure you look out for that. Um, let's see. Test. We have nothing in the test folder. So what you need to do is review the Welcome to Drift video where I will where I'm explaining to you how to download a copy of your test, um, or if you've taken the test, how to review your results and copy and paste your results on a Word document so that you can go back and review your answers and rework some of those scenarios or review the chapter for that information. So as you can see, once you've become organized in your courses for learning coding, as you can see, there's a lot of information for the, just the first week alone, and there's um, a different places that you can gather that information. Um, but once you become organized and you download that information and you save it where it needs to be, you will actually be more successful than you normally would if you did not become organized prior to beginning your assignments. So remember, make your folders, make your subfolders, and then from there, go through the course, download everything, review everything, the places that I've shown you. And then that's what you do for the very first day. So if you've got gained access to this class today, then this is the only task that you should be doing. 
Once you've done that, since it's a lot to take in, you should probably take the rest of the day off. From there, take your to-do list and your study plan or your checklist and your study plan and begin working a plan of action to make it through the materials. Believe me, this will work for you because this is how I actually completed my graduate degree. Um, you want to look at the welcome video, the link is here, but remember it is inside of the week one student materials folder. And student materials are loaded by the instructor, weekly materials are loaded by UMA. Thank you. Have a great day.